being able to recognize a rock like this, I think is ingrained in all of us. Um, this was so crucial for our species and our whole lineage to survive. It's a little bit tricky to get the hang of it first, but once you get your eye tuned into it, you can pick that rock out, out of 10,000 rocks. Hello, my name's Harley, and today I'm gonna to teach you about humanity's most important discovery, the conchoidal fracture. Rocks with conchoidal fracture can be split apart into two groups. We have igneous rocks, so those formed by cooling from direct cooling from a lava or magma, and we have sedimentary rocks. The rocks today that we're gonna be getting are called basalt, which is, um, it's a mafic rock that has cooled quite quickly. It has very small crystals, at least in this location, and is suitable for making arrowheads and other stone tools. The other category roughly falls into sedimentary rocks. Those are your cherts, they're your um, flint, jasper, any sort of rock that has a fair bit of silica in it, that'll have a conchoidal fracture as long as the, like, the structure is not that crystalline. There's a third category, which would be minerals. Minerals with a conchoidal fracture. Um, that would be maybe crystalline quartz. Uh, there's quite a few mi minerals that do, but you basically need a rock that doesn't have cleavage. Um, cleavage is basically where th in a crystal lattice, if they have lined up along in the crystal and there's a plane of weakness, it'll split along those planes. Uh, and even if you have a mineral that has conchoidal fracture, if there's strong cleavage, you just won't be able to make anything out of it. So today I'm going to show you some basalt and uh, it should be good. It's a hot day. Um, and I keep pulling up. I thought that there was a, a location that was closer. I thought you could get a, up a logging road in Lions Bay, but I must be mistaken. It might be Furry Creek or something like that. But we're just going to head up to Britannia Beach by the old uh, old Britannia mine, copper mine, and uh, find some basalt. So we've arrived. You may be expecting some sort of a big cliff of nappable basalt and uh, sorry to disappoint, what we're here is actually just in the road. Around here, they at one point were paving all the gravel roads around with nappable basalt. Now, I'm not sure where the original quarry was, uh, I'll have to look into that at some point, but uh, for the time being, we're going to be able to find what we need right here, right in the road. So here's a prime example. See the nice kind of dishes it makes? So you can see there's some crystals in there. But it's still a perfectly workable stone. I'm gonna chip a little, uh, little biface. That one was pretty cracked up. That's what we'll bring home. I'll show you some examples of points that I've made out of this exact material. You can find this stuff on beaches all the way down. I've even found it like in the middle of uh, Washington State. So it was a very widely used tool stone on the west coast of North America. 
The rocks probably came from Garibaldi, these ones in particular. That's up near Squamish. There's quite a bit of volcanic activity along the west coast as well. Just so you guys know, I wasn't kidding about all the roads being made out of this stuff. We just pulled off on the side here. And check it out. Now you're not going to make amazing points out of it. Like you won't be able to get everything you want, like an ice obsidian or a fine chert. But man, they make really cool points. They look totally authentic. They look about a thousand years old as soon as you're done with them. So, I showed you my secret spot to find some uh, tough but nappable basalt. Basalt's great and all. You can make arrowheads. They're pretty tough. You can make really sharp, really durable knives and arrowheads that last longer than obsidian. Like, not nearly as sharp, but well sharp enough. Um, and it's a tough material, so it won't break. It's not nearly as brittle. Um, but I didn't tell you the best part about basalt. Basalt forms in flows that sometimes can span hundreds of kilometers. Um, so when you find a basalt flow that has workable material, chances are you're going to be able to fill up trucks and it will be all like, you'll never run out of that material. So this stuff here is our local material that is plentiful. No real chance of it running out. I mean, here, this one particular spot, it could very well run out. Um, I think I've picked over it here and I found most of the, the best pieces. I mean, here's another, actually, that's a really nice one. This one spot could get exhausted, but there's no way. Like this float, you can actually see a lot of these have like parts of columns. So it was a columnar basalt at one point. Um, so when you find that deposit, it's going to be enormous. And as you can see, there's enough to pave every logging road and back road up from Furry Creek and Lions Bay. I'm, I'm sure I found one at Lions Bay as well. All the way from Lions Bay to north of Squamish, all the way up almost to Whistler. So there is a lot of material to go around. And I'm sure if you can find where this is coming out of the ground, you'll never run out of this basalt. That said, it's pretty tough. Other igneous rocks though, like obsidian, comes in huge flows also. If you ever go down to the glass buttes, it is an... Oh, there's a mosquito on you. Oh. <laughs> Dusty hands. Um, but if you ever go down to the glass buttes, there's... It spans for miles and miles and miles. And the flows can be 15, 20 feet thick, maybe bigger. Um, and it, it's, it's enormous. There's, there's so much obsidian there. I mean, we can exhaust the resource, but that's the beauty of uh, igneous rocks. Is there, there's almost by definition, there's gonna be more. There's gonna be a lot once you find a flow. On the flip side, uh, when you have shirts, and flints, most of the time those are going to be a small portion of the total rock. Um, you're going to have a limestone or a chalk bed and within that maybe one or two percent of the entire thing will be chert or flint. That said, there's huge swaths of area where if you have one percent of that is chert and you're talking about, you know, formations that span we're talking states-wide formations, so uh, that ends up being a lot of rock too. So, but uh, you just don't have the same concentration where the entire cliff will be nappable basalt. If you didn't see my last video, check that out where I went and walked along the Tulamine. In that, I discussed looking for sharp shapes, um, dishes, 
and I just wanted to point this one out here. See the flat surface dish that way, this way. Basically, this rock looks so out of the ordinary. And this, this skill, being able to recognize a rock like this, I think is ingrained in all of us. Um, this was so crucial for our species and our whole lineage to survive. This made us able to make tools, kill big animals like mammoths. Being able to recognize that shape was so crucial for our survival. It's a little bit tricky to get the hang of it first, but once you get your eye tuned into it, you can pick that rock out, out of 10,000 rocks. Maybe 100,000 rocks, you'll be able to pick that rock out. No problem. And I think you can do that because our species and our entire primate lineage, all hominins, that's the reason why we were able to make it out from the jungle, make it out and become the great tool using apes that we are today. So, anyways, enough of that. I'm gonna head home, maybe go get an ice cream. Allie just found some perfectly ripe delicious thimbleberries. The other great thing about thimbleberries is they've got nice big leaves. They're soft. They're pretty strong. If you happen to run out of toilet paper in the bushes, this one's number this one's the second best. The second best plant to wipe your butt with.